Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we will be looking at today's Geeks for Geeks problem of the day. The name of the problem is sum of subarrays. So the pro problem is we are given an array and we have to find the sum of all the subarrays for this given array. Also, it is guaranteed that the total sum will always fit in a 32 bit integer. So let's first understand what is a subarray. So basically a subarray is any contiguous portion of the array. It is any contiguous portion of the array. So let's take an example array. Um, array contains the elements 4, 5 and 6. So we can say the element 4 itself is a subarray or 5 comma 6 is a subarray or the entire array 4, 5, 6 is also a subarray because all the elements are in a contiguous fashion. But the uh, portion let's say 4 and 6, this is not a subarray. This is rather a subsequence because the elements of this subarray are non-contiguous. Okay, so now with this understanding, let's look at the examples that are given in this problem. So the example one, uh, the array is one, two and three and the uh, subarrays of this uh, array are one, two, three, one comma two, two comma three and the entire array one, two, three. So there they have calculated their sums and the sum turns out to be 20. And for the another next example, we have the subarrays as one, 3 and 1 comma 3 and their sum turns out to be 8. So we have to calculate this sum. So what's the most brute force or naive approach that comes to your mind? So of course it is generating all the possible subarrays and then trying to calculate their sum. So how do you generate all the possible subarrays? You first fix your starting point uh, for the subarray. So in this case let's say it is 1 and then you keep on adding uh, new elements to the subarray. Uh, by expanding the window uh, until we reach the end of the array. So let's say we started at 1, then the subarray will be 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Once we have reached the end of the array, we'll, start, uh, we'll move our starting point. So now we'll make our starting point as 2. Then I will again do the same process. So the subarrays will be 2, 2, 3. And since we have reached the end of the array, we'll again move the starting point. And in this case, it will be 3. So only one subarray is possible with 3. So what are the possible subarrays that we have generated actually? It is 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3 and just 3. Okay, so these are the 6 possible subarrays that are also given in this example test case. Okay, so what are these sums? Sum will be 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 2 plus 5 plus 3. So this turns out to be 20. The sum is 20. So let's quickly look at the solution for this approach. We'll have two nested loops, one which is tracked by i, which picks the starting index for the subarray, and one which is tracked by j, which picks the ending index for the subarray. Also, we have a sum variable which tracks the running sum of for our uh, subarrays starting at index i. So uh, we'll add the current element under consideration to this sum and we'll add this running sum to our resultant sum. And finally, this resultant sum will contain our uh, sum for all the subarrays. So if you see, uh, there are two loops and each of these loops run for order of n time. Okay, so the overall time complexity will be order of n into n, which is order of n square. And if you see the problem constraints, the uh, constraints are the size of the array can be 10 raised to 5. So if you write an order of n square algorithm, it will be time limit exceeded. So we have to somehow manage this uh, solution in order of n time or either order of n log n time. So let us now quickly look at the optimized approach for this problem. Uh, instead of thinking about all the possible subarrays and then trying to generate those subarrays to get the final resultant sum, can we somehow figure out what is the contribution of an element array of i to the final resultant sum? So for this, we have to calculate or we have to figure out what is the number of times each element array of i appears across all the possible subarrays. So then we can con find the contribution uh, to the sum for this element array of i as the number of times it appears across all the subarrays into the value of that element. So let's quickly understand what are the possible uh, subarrays where an element i contributes to uh, for the overall subarray sum. So let's consider uh, the element at index 0 
and uh, try to understand what are its possible contributions. So it will contribute to the subarray just one, one comma two, one two three, and uh, one two three four. So basically, it will contribute to all the subarrays where it is present as one of the starting index. But there will also be the subarrays where the element at index i is not. Uh, the starting index but rather the subarray starts at some index before it so in this case let's say uh, we are interested in finding the subarrays where the element at index 2 is present as one of the element so it will also be present in the subarrays uh, where the starting index is 0 or the starting index of the subarray is 1 so let's understand this or formulate this so what are the possible subarrays where i is equals to 0 is the starting index but which also includes the element under uh, consideration that is element 3 it is 1 2 3 and 1 2 3 4 similarly for index 1 it is 2 3 and 2 3 4 and then similarly for the current index uh, that is i is equals to 2 uh, which is basically the starting element it is uh, 3 and 3 4 so if you take a closer look at the examples that we saw we can figure out something from this examples so let's say the so array is from 0 to n minus 1 and let's say we are interested in finding the number of times this sub uh, element at index i is appearing in the sub array okay so let's say uh, this i is equals to 0 is our starting position for the sub array so how many such sub arrays where i is equals to 0 is the starting position and also includes i so it will be 0 to i 0 to i plus 1 then another sub array will be 0 to i plus 2 so on and so forth till 0 to n minus 1 right so how many such sub arrays where i starting i is equals to 0 is the starting position are present so it will be n minus i sub arrays right so for element uh, at index 0 to be the starting element uh, there are n minus i sub arrays which also includes element in index i then what is then we'll move our starting index we'll make i is equals to 1 as our starting index for the sub array and again there will be uh, the sub arrays from I, 1 to i 1 to i plus 1 1 to i plus 2 so on and so forth till n minus 1 so again for element at index i to be uh, index 1 to be the starting element there will be again n minus i sub arrays and how many various choices we have for selecting the starting index it is 0 to i right again i will have n minus 1 choices uh, for the sub arrays right so if you see how many total number of sub arrays is i pres uh, the element at index i present into it will be i minus 0 plus 1 because we have i plus 1 choices for selecting the starting index and for every starting index there are n minus i sub arrays so the overall contribution of this element at index i to the sub array sum will be i plus 1 into n minus i into array of i right and if we do this for all the elements from 0 to n minus 1 we can calculate the overall sub array sum so basically with this we can solve the entire problem in just order of n time right just order of n time and space complexity will be order of one because we will be just using some variables to compute the uh, overall sub array sums so now let's quickly code this up in our code editor look at the solution for this uh, approach so in the variable n we store the length of the array uh, we initialize our result to zero which will store the overall sub array sum of for all the sub arrays and then we go over each element of the array and we update the resultant sum with its contribution which is uh, highlighted by i plus 1 into n minus i into array of i as we saw in the explanation uh, before and we will add that to the our result and then we will just return our result so if you see it's a fairly straightforward implementation and the time complexity would be order of n because you are going over each element exactly once and the space complexity will be order of n because we, we are using one or two variables to basically do our processing like this video then do share it with your friends and do subscribe to the channel and uh, stay tuned for more such videos